Good evening, ghoulies and ghosties and long-leggedy beasties. This is Alex, coming at you from the underworld, and welcome back to another episode of... At last, I am finally wrapping up the Rats trilogy with James Herbert's novel Domain. And very much like this book's predecessor, even though this one wasn't recommended to me, had it not been for the viewer Mark Lind recommending Rats, I might not be reviewing this book today. But before I get started, I would just like to note that I buddy read this with my good online friend Hanny, and since we had read the previous two books together, we were trying to figure out exactly where this book would take place before we started our read. I mean, the rats took place in the city and Domain took place in the country, so we were like, alright, what kind of a backdrop are we going to have for this story? And I honestly just kind of went out on a limb here and said perhaps it would be in a flat complex or something like that, but let me tell you, I was totally wrong because, yeah, what goes down in this book just did not see it coming. Anywho, without me rambling everyone's ears off, I would just like to thank Mark Lynn for having recommended The Rats in the first place, because even though I wanted to read this series, had it not been for his recommendation, it might would have been longer before I actually took the dive. And I would like to thank Hanny for buddy reading this series with me, because it was a lot of fun discussing the political side of everything, and all of the nasty guts and gore, it really kind of felt like it returned us to being children and how we were just being squeamish over everything. So yeah, that was a lot of fun, and I really do appreciate that. So thank you, Hanny, and thank you, Mark. So with that said, let's see how society reacts when their everyday life is broken apart because of a nuclear holocaust. Domain by James Herbert takes place in the near future, where a typical London day has turned into a complete bloodbath due to multiple nuclear warheads exploding throughout the city. Which, because of the horrors that unfold, this day eventually becomes known as Doom Tuesday. And in good old James Herbert fashion, we're introduced to multiple characters where we gain their perspective right before they die. Shortly thereafter, we get introduced to the protagonist by the name of Culver, who has rescued a guy from the street named Alex, which, because of these blasts, Alex has temporarily gone blind. From there, Culver follows Alex's instructions, and they go underground, where for the next two to four weeks, they are to take refuge in a fallout shelter until the radiation from up above has had the opportunity to die down. Yet, on their way to safety, they rescue a young girl by the name of Kate from a new generation of mutant rats that have been breeding under the streets of London for the last few years. And even though they are able to make it to their destination, unfortunately, they're now trapped not only because of the radiation that's above them, but because of the rats that are clawing at their door. In 1984, the infamous classic Threads shocked viewers of the BBC, and in that same year, Herbert released Domain. Similar to one another, both reflected the fears of there being nuclear war, and who better to write it than Herbert, who grew up in the post-war East End of London. In an interview with thisishorror.co.uk, Herbert explained that critics spoke poorly of his work, but regardless, he carried on doing what he loved. Because of their negative response, he always thought that he must have ridden the rats badly. But a journalist told Herbert early into his career that he had read the first three of Herbert's books. These would include The Rats, The Fog, and The Survivor, and they were very well written. In this interview, Herbert explained that he carried on trying to master his own writing, and although he believed he hadn't yet, 
He felt he was getting close. Normally, I use this opportunity to reveal some fun facts about the book I reviewed. Unfortunately, the more I read in this series, the fewer interviews and fun facts I was able to find. So, for that reason, I really have nothing else to share for this segment. But with that said, it's time for me to move on to the spoilers, and if you haven't read this book before, I'm about to reveal some things that could ruin the experience for you. And if you would like to click away, all you have to do is scroll down to the comments, and you'll see that I have a pinned comment at the top with a timestamp in it. Once you click the timestamp in that comment, it will direct you away from the spoilers and bring you to the thoughts section. Now, you only have 17 seconds to do this, so ready, set, go! Since everyone's had the opportunity to click away, I would like to talk about a few of my favorite moments. First up is the entire opening sequence. Now, this starts off as some alarm sound that were last used during World War II. And upon this happening, an elderly lady steps outside right when an A-bomb goes off. And even though people are running underground for safety, she understands that if she were to join them, they would do nothing more than trample her to death because of her age. Then, a few paragraphs later, we get introduced to a gas station attendant who's trying to make it home for shelter. Yet, in the process of him doing this, everything gets blown to smithereens, including him. Meanwhile, we have a lady who's watching this chaos go down from an upper story window of a hotel, and when the blast goes off, it causes her flesh to fuse to that window, and she gets trapped there as the building collapses. From there, we have horrors that continue to pile on top of themselves until it is nothing but a pure apocalyptic nightmare. Similar to his other books, I really love how Herbert gave multiple perspectives during a catastrophe. And because of him introducing someone only to kill them off a few paragraphs later, I feel like I gained everything in regards to how everyone felt and how they reacted to this one circumstance. Which, surprisingly, this was all very diverse in regards to what each individual experienced. Also, it was sequences like this where I really felt impressed by how Herbert was able to give us this whole background for a character by simply using one or two sentences rather than describing their background over the matter of paragraphs, pages, or chapters. And while some people might feel like these background characters were really unnecessary and they were only used to fill page time, I think it's those little details that we gain that really did it for me and it added a whole other level to the subjects at hand. My next favorite moment is kind of hard to narrow down into one particular scene. So, for that reason, I'm going to cheat a little bit and lump a few circumstances together that regard the background characters who had been exposed to radiation. Now, at this point, the day that has become known as Doom Tuesday has passed, and it's been established that those who were exposed to the radiation will die within the matter of days. And as they suffer, they will have nausea, their throats will become inflamed, they will bleed, they'll have diarrhea, they'll develop leukemia, and then they will die in a coma. Meanwhile, the rats will remain unaffected because this mutant breed thrives off of radiation. Well, as everyone has nothing left to live for, we get introduced to this one guy who has created a fallout shelter under his house for him and his family, and one evening as he's taking their waste out into the basement, he hears the family dog scratching on the other side of the basement door, which this entire time he could have cared less about the dog and he's just left it to fend for itself. But little does he know that the dog is scratching on the door trying to warn him that he and his family are about to get eaten alive by rats. 
Also, under other circumstances, we get introduced to a teenage girl who had become orphaned after her parents died from the radiation. And to make matters worse, the place where she's taken shelter is the same place where she's attacked by a rapist. And even though she is able to escape him, she and him both die by the rats. Then shortly after that, we get introduced to a poor woman who has outlived her family and she has gone insane. And to give some detail on exactly how crazy she's gone, she's actually propped her dead family up around the kitchen table and she continues life as normal by talking to them and giving them food. Then, after that, we get introduced to a guy who had taken shelter underground in a bunker, only to discover that something had fallen on top of the bunker lid, and no one knows that he's down there. So, even though it's now time for him to escape, he is unable to get out of that confined space. And to make matters worse, he's asphyxiating on the rot fumes of his dead cat. Overall, I'm glad that this book showed us the different perspectives of those outside of the shelter where the elite gathered, because I tend to think had it just primarily focused on those in that shelter, it would have gotten old quick for me. But it was these glimpses from the background characters that really made me feel like it was more interesting and disturbing. And even though the elite in the shelter had it a lot better than those outside, it didn't stop the elite from attempting suicide. And I really do feel like it was these glimpses from multiple perspectives that really just went on and drove the horror home for me, as it gave quite a few different scenarios that felt really legit in regards to what could possibly happen if this did go down. And because of how everything played out, I really felt like this was a solid character study. My final favorite moment was the grand finale. So at this point, the shelter that our protagonist had taken refuge in had filled with water, rats, and smoke. But luckily, they were able to use the ventilation shafts to escape. However, once they are in what's left of society, they suffer a gruesome attack by a gang. And after they're able to escape, they decide to try to find another government hideout so they can just try to live through all of this crap. Well, even though they're able to make it to their destination, they discover this whole subterranean city has been just absolutely ran over with nothing but mutant rats. And because of the outcome that they've encountered, they assume that these rats had existed here long before the Doom Tuesday events took place. So for that reason, everyone who was down there prior to them has died because of the rats. But even still, the rats that are there are dead or dying because they have now contracted the pneumonic plague. From there, Culver, Dealey, Kate, and a few others are able to escape the rats. And after they get above ground, they try to leave by boat. But as they're leaving the dock, a whole shit ton of rats jump in the water after them. And as they're trying to haul ass, they go under a bridge where even more rats fall on top of them. But before anyone else can die, a helicopter from headquarters flies over and picks up the remaining survivors. And at this point, the attention shifts from the protagonist and brings us back to the rats, where we discover that the mother rat has survived and she's continuing to populate. Even though the rescuers in the helicopter explain to the protagonist that only the Twin Cities took this bad, Due to how the rats were able to continue to thrive and populate beyond this catastrophe really made me think that Herbert was suggesting that the Twin Cities had gone to the rats and the rest of England had the potential to follow. Also, I was really surprised to see this series end on the note that it did because when I started this trilogy, I had no idea we were building to a climax that regarded nuclear war. 
And because of how the rats were seen throughout these books as being a society that scrounged and lived underground and just obeyed a hierarchy, it was really interesting to see how society was kind of brought down to their level. And because of how everything played out through this book, I can't help but think that Herbert was suggesting that humans and rats were very similar in regards to how they pillage and kill and do whatever it takes in order to survive. I would like to take this opportunity to bitch about a couple of background characters. For starters, I would like to bring into perspective that sorry shit for brains who did not include the family dog in their bunker. And all he did was just stand there and listen to that poor dog scratch on the door while thinking, hmm, sucks to be him. But in all honesty, because of how things played out, I tend to think that the dog was trying to get to his owner to warn them about the rats that were about to eat their sorry asses. So, in the long run, this dumbass actually screwed himself and his family over because had the family dog been with them, there's the potential that the dog could have helped save them. Another ass wipe I would like to bring into the light is that nameless dick cheese who tried to rape that poor girl in the theater. Like, my god, dude, for all you know, you are living in the apocalypse, and instead of joining hands with somebody to make it through all of this shit, you decide to let your little inchworm put you in the middle of a sex crime. And as he was doing all this bullcrap, I couldn't help but wonder how many other women he had done this to before, and how many other women he would do it to if something didn't stop his ass. Which, under this circumstance, I truly have to give the rats kudos, because they sent his sorry ass to meet his maker. Now, don't be fooled by me just bitching about these two characters. There were other characters in this book that totally deserved a good bitching, but it's just that these two bastards, they really got me more so than anyone else. Domain by James Herbert was an ending to a trilogy that I did not expect whatsoever. And even though I really did enjoy this book, I am happy that the series is over, because had it continued on, I do think it would have been overkill. Now, as far as characters are concerned, I really didn't vibe with the cast that we were given. And as far as themes are concerned, I do feel like this book stayed true to its predecessors, where it focused on corrupt politics, greed, and survival. Character-wise, as I said, I really didn't vibe with any of the cast of this book, and as I continued to read, I realized I really didn't care who lived or died, which I think maybe this is because at the beginning of the book, after the bombs went off, everything just felt so hopeless that I honestly thought everyone was going to die. So maybe to protect myself, I just simply divorced myself from these characters? I don't know, but maybe the art of the book is to make the reader feel as hopeless as the cast that we're given, so that when something good does happen, it kind of surprises us. But at the same time, even though I didn't feel a connection here, I do feel like this was a really good character study because it presents a catastrophic event that affects a large group of people, and we get to see how each individual reacts differently to this. Theme-wise, overall, this series focuses on corrupted politics and authority figures which, even though these subjects aren't so heavy-handed with the first two books, Domain takes those subjects and presents them under a microscope. And by doing this, it reminds us that not only are we reading books that are based in animal horror, but we're reading books that are based in political horror. Now, with Domain, I feel like this focus was its strongest when it came down to the underground bunkers that were intended for the elite in case there was a nuclear holocaust. Which, what I mean by that is, one of these bunkers is so big, it could fit a city inside of it. 
but instead of this being used for the general public, everything seems like it's just being reserved for those who are considered to be elite or those who can contribute to society. Meanwhile, everyone else out there, such as you and I, are just scrambling around trying to get through the day without our hair falling out. And I tend to think that if this really happened, this is the scenario we would be met with. Next up is the subject of greed, which of course what I just spoke about is a pretty good example. But other than that, there are quite a few instances throughout this work where political greed is mentioned. Like, at the beginning, as the bombs are going off, one character thinks to herself that this was inevitable because her country has been oil-hungry. And even though the book never specifies why the nuclear attack happened or who's to blame for it, the root of any war is always greed. And unfortunately, war is profitable. Aside from politics, survival was a huge part of this book especially when it came down to the everyday person who lived through the nuclear blast and radiation. Which, as I continued to read, I got the impression that had it not been for this catastrophe, everyone could have continued living as is. But because of what went down and the anarchy that followed, the everyday person is having to resort to extremes in order to see the next day. Other than them, this subject is focused on with the elite as well, but instead of the everyday person trying to save themselves and their loved ones, the elite, as they're running to their bunkers, just kind of gave me the impression that it was every person for themselves. Now, aside from that, survival is focused on again, but under a different light with the main protagonist. And this comes about because due to an event that happened in his past, he has survivor's guilt. And as he's trying to get through that, he's met with another circumstance near the end of this book, which I imagine really didn't help him out that much. Overall, Domain by James Herbert didn't scare me, gross me out, or creep me out. However, I was really impressed by the character study that this book presented, and I felt like this was a great ending to a trilogy that had become this political. While focusing on the social issues that were presented in the first two books, Domain by James Herbert presented an unforgettable climax. And as I read this trilogy, which had been written over the matter of a decade, I noticed how Herbert grew throughout the years and his writing also matured. Which, by reading these books as quickly as what I did, it was so cool to see how he grew and I also felt like I grew with him. Now, even though I really did enjoy this book, it was a very heavy read and it was very political. And that's kind of weird to say because as strongly political as what this work was, I never really felt like Herbert beat me over the head with politics. But if you're not in that mindset at this time, this might not necessarily be the book for you. But personally, if you've read the first two books, I really feel like this one puts the cherry on the cake and it rounds everything out so you can see the bigger picture. Now that we're at the end of this video, I would like to thank these amazing people for contributing to my Patreon account. As you can tell, some of the names listed here are creators, so be sure to check out their work. And if you would like to contribute to my Patreon account, I have a link available in the description section of this episode, where for $5 a month I'll give you a shout out like what you see here, and if there's a certain profession you would like for me to tie to your name, just let me know and I'll include that as well. Also, I do have a $10 tier available where for $10 a month, I'll still give you the shout out, but I do creepy photography on the side. So I'll send over one of my creepy photos and once you receive that, you can print it off and do whatever you like. So if you're able to do this, that's awesome. If not, no sweat. I just hope you return to this channel so we can have a fun time together. Also, if you would like to hit me up on social media, links to my Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram are all available in the description section of this episode. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, 
be sure to subscribe and click that notifications bell because I have more book reviews coming in the near future. So until we see each other again, I hope you're doing well and sweet nightmares.